Well, hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is Tuesday once again, and today we have just finished our first ever game of Save Patient Zero, a game where we're going to be playing as competing labs trying to find a cure for a new virus before the other team can do the same. I'm here with my fellow barristers, Elizabeth and Ian, and we're going to talk you through everything we thought about the game, why we thought it was so cool, why it went way faster than we thought it was going to, and why these score pads are really awesome. We'll get to that in a second. First, we're going to talk about how the game plays a little bit. Safe Patient Zero is actually weirdly played best with a odd number of players, even though it's a team game. That's because one of the players at the table is going to play as Savvy the computer. Now Savvy has access to the three parts of the antidote that the two teams are trying to find, but Savvy can only give you information when you use your lab tools. So each of the lab teams is going to be collecting data by submitting tools they'd like to use, and then Savvy is going to spit back out information. Every time we use the scan pad, for instance, we're going to show Savvy a 2 by 3 grid of molecules on our sheet, and then Savvy's going to tell us how many of those are part of the actual antidote. So every one of these tools has a different use, and we're going to choose which of those to use every turn to keep narrowing down those molecules until we find the final three, and then we use our antidote tool to make our final solution. One of the things I really like about this game is that unlike other deduction games, I'm not just doing the same action over and over again to try to gather that hidden information. I actually have a variety of different tools which give me different actions to get at that information. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a really fun and interesting way to play that type of deduction game. Yeah, and it's an interesting take on kind of like a puzzle game. Basically, each team is doing a, an individual puzzle with one solution that they're trying to figure out in as few moves as possible. But the game turns it into a race and introduces this savvy player, which Ian played for us, uh, who is just feeding information to the teams. But somehow having that interface between the two teams and someone you're talking to when you're getting that data makes it feel like a much more social game than just a puzzle you're working on. So I thought that was really cleverly done. Yeah, I really enjoyed the like table talk and banter that we were able to have with uh, Ian, our computer. It was a lot of fun to do that. All Insert! Right. I promise I'm not <laughs> copying <laughs> you, Lab <laughs> <of tea. laughs> I'm going to take Max. Okay. I'm going to take Max. Alright. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> So when I first saw all of the tools and the score pads, I thought that maybe I was going to be overwhelmed or that I was going to have difficulty learning all the rules and mechanics, but it was actually really quick to pick up and we didn't even play with all the available tools. Every time you play, you have different options of which tools you're going to play with, so there's going to be a lot of variety in this game. Well, and I think what's neat about having the, you know, the savvy player, the moderator, so to speak, is they can always just have the rule book out too. That savvy player can just tell you what those cards do when you do them and help you kind of guide you through that the the rules because that's what they're doing. They're they're guiding the gameplay. Yeah, it may look daunting, but this this data gathering sheet for each team is actually beautifully laid out. I, you know, sitting down to it for the first time, you look and think to yourself. Oh boy, there's a lot here that I'm going to have to manage, but the cool part is that because of how they set it up, it manages itself for you. So each different tool in the game gives Savvy a different instruction as to where to put things or mark things on your sheet to give you information. And I found myself naturally over the course of the game just thinking, oh man, I really wish I had, oh, it's already where I need it to be. And I'm so glad that it's sitting right where it is so that I can track that information that I would have probably lost track of if it wasn't for the way that sheet is laid out. So super cool design on that guy. It's also worth mentioning just how cool the different tools feel to use. So every single one of them has a different effect. Some of them use cards that you're feeding into Savvy, and Savvy's giving you information back based on the cards that you randomly draw off the top of a deck. Some of them you actually get to use little cool tools, and the scan pad actually fits over a certain spot on your board so that you can check on that. Um, so it's got a little bit of like an actual like sandbox laboratory feel. I've got all these different actual physical objects and items that I'm going to be putting in places and then that's all giving me information. Well, and each one of the tools lets you use a different type of deduction too. So like there, are, you know, if you've ever played an escape room game or what have you, they combine all that, they do that for you. In this one you get to choose kind of which ones you are more effective at using um, to try and make your decisions and eliminate the molecules that don't fit in the antidote. And based on what data points you're seeing on those molecules on your lab sheet as you go, you can prioritize different tools yeah. at different oh, yeah. stages of the game, which feels great. Yeah. 
as the savvy player, I would say that you should be wary of how you give your information because you can give away things by mm -hmm. different motions or, or actions that you're taking for one team or the other. It tells you to, to take the pencil and write on their paper, do that rather than announcing it out loud or um, something like that in place of it because you can give information to the other team which might help them guess easier. And we also kind of butted heads with one of the rules in the game that states that whoever plays their tool card first on any turn gets to use their tool card first that turn. And we ran into a scenario in both of our games, our practice game and the one we actually did for the playthrough, where whoever played the card first on the first turn was just kind of ahead in the thinking game for the rest of the game. They got their data first, so then they were thinking about their next move first, so they played their next card before the other player. This doesn't have a huge effect until you're actually trying to scramble for that antidote and maybe you're trying to find the cure before the other player gets to try to find theirs um, but it also just had kind of an effect of making you feel like you were kind of running behind and trying to think faster as the player who was going second every single turn All right, well, off of that last point we were making about the trend where one team tends to go faster if the other team gets behind early, uh, just because they have time to think while the other team's gathering data. Uh, at three players, that was definitely the case. Now, it was awesome at three. I almost immediately after playing was like, three has got to be the right number to play at, right? You've got one savvy player and then two people working on their puzzles. But I think the thing you'd be benefiting from if you jumped to five players, so two teams of two plus a savvy, would be that you could start to manage different things. One of you would be collecting data and writing stuff on the actual sheet and crossing off eliminated molecules, while the other player could do some tool management and say, yeah, based on what you seem to be grabbing there, I'm definitely gonna go for this one next. And then you could maybe even pull out ahead of the other team if they thought about their next move a little bit too hard. And I think with five players, you'd have this really interesting uh, cooperation between the two people on each team. The game goes up to seven players, and that would mean two teams of three plus a savvy, and that feels a hint too high for me. I'm gonna say that I think three or five players is the sweet spot on this one. Yeah, because uh, you want to talk to your teammates about how you're gonna strategize, but you don't want to talk so much that the other team can yeah. overhear you. Both of our games, the practice game and the one we filmed, both took around 15 minutes to play. So it's pretty fast and pretty straightforward. Um, the information flow goes really nicely. Um, and because of that, you can swap around what players are doing what uh, pretty quickly. You know, every 15 minutes, a game will be done. So that being said, I we use the standard, you know, basic setup for the cards um, and the tools that you could use in each lab, which I think are the more straightforward ones and easier ones to use. So if you add more complexity by adding different tool choices and the way that the tools work, potentially giving you information that requires you to do a little more thought and a little more deduction, I could see it taking up to the 30 minute mark that it says on the box. So this is a great game for anyone who loves just a basic deduction game like Clue. Uh, are there more complex deduction games out there? Yes, but this one was fairly light, easy to learn, fun. Uh, the pace was quick. Um, I feel like it was a very social game. Uh, there wasn't a lot of like staring at the board quietly. It, it felt like a really good time. If you are or you have some of those friends that maybe aren't as apt in games or are into learning new stuff or um, complex rules, having them play the, the savvy player is a really neat way to be able to play games with your friends and socialize with them without having to be in the muck of, of, of doing the rules of the game. Uh, the, the role is really very much so just giving information to your friends and socializing about it. But also I think it's a good role for folks who like to guide their friends into having a fun time. I'm a, I'm a huge proponent when I play games as the arbiter of fun, so to speak. And I, I, I intentionally pick games that will let me guide the table into enjoying themselves. That's what brings me joy in games. And I think anybody who likes that will really, really enjoy playing the savvy player. Alrighty, well, thank you so much for joining us this week as we talked through Save Patient Zero. If you liked the video, hit that like button. That means the YouTube algorithm is going to show this video to more people. If you've got a comment, leave a comment. We love chatting with our viewers. And as always, hit that subscribe button if you would like to see all of our weekly videos when we post them. Thanks so much for joining us this week, and we will see you next time.